Um, your taxi's here. <laughs> Hello, Warriors, and I'm so excited today because I am here with somebody that I know very well. This is Kelly. Oh, hello everybody thanks for having us yeah this is great this is really really cool because me and kelly know each other from a certain show don't we, we do back in the day back in the day i was vocal coaching on a show and talia was in my category she was my contestant and we got to work together and i got to support you through that part of your journey which was an honor so at that stage when we first met each other i actually wasn't diagnosed but I was having so many problems and I was a bit of an emotional wreck wasn't I and um, a lot of things that we went through together we had no idea that later on yeah. would help us with something that we both have because Kelly has AF. We had no clue that that was a mutual connection there and until all these years later and, and I see you pop up on my socials and I'm like no she's got AS and I reached out and we started talking and here we are today. So I really want to know Kelly because we've never spoken about this no. this is a shock to both of us <laughs> um, tell me your journey tell me where it all first started. So I was around 18 at the time and I started to get a lot of hip pain and I would wake up in the morning and I would feel really stiff in my hips and I would really struggle to transfer my weight from one side of, of my legs to the other and I'd get up at like four in the morning and I was at sixth form at the time and I'd go do a few laps around the block just so I wasn't limping by the time I got to school and it was it was such a striking pain and an alarming pain that I it wasn't long before I went to the doctors because I thought, you know, I'm, I'm 18 years old. None of my mates live with this. What, what's happened? And I went to my GP and they said, oh, we'll refer you for a course of physio just to check things out. And I, um, I had a set of physio sessions on the NHS with this really unfriendly lady this is this is giving physios a bad rep physios are generally lovely and wonderful but i just had a, a really terrible experience yeah. with this physio who saw me bouncing in 18 years old looking well looking healthy and she just thought i was a bit of a time waster and she said oh it's growing pains there's nothing wrong with you and i said well, and she'd get me to do a few different stretches and she's like well you can do it and i said i can do it but it really hurts to do it anyhow long story short i I pushed for a, to be scanned to have some imaging done because I was I was in so much pain with with the pain in my hips and so she reported back to my my GP and and I got the imaging and the imaging came back clear nothing. absolutely nothing so and I remember having a, a, my final session with her and she um, she just really shamed me she sat me down and said you know look I told you everything was fine and you've wasted a lot of people's time and, and oh, no! money yeah and, and it was really awful you know and I really I felt really ashamed that day and I left and I thought wow I you know I must just you know everyone I speak to has some form of backache or you know potentially I've just got a low pain threshold and so I just I carried on for years after that and kind of put up with the pain and it changed an awful lot it traveled up into my cervical spine and in my 20s I was performing a lot and really struggling to turn my head to drive the car to gigs and um and then it went into my um chest and ribs and about six seven years later I just paid for some private physio out of desperation really and I had two sessions with with this physio and she said can I write to your GP and I said well please do and by that time I got a referral back to the hospital um, imaging and bloods and the changes were were there at that point in my sacroiliac joints and I got a diagnosis then so I was yeah 26 2010 yeah so that's what Eight years or so, almost eight yeah, years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Since the onset of, of those symptoms, yeah. And I think that's a really similar thing that everybody has. You know, the physio refers you back and says, you know, I can't see anything, or you look fine to me, or there's nothing on the x rays, there's nothing on the MRI. And I think a lot of people are saying, I felt mad, I felt like 
it's all in my head or maybe I'm being dramatic. Uh, I think you develop some really resourceful but unhelpful coping strategies when you don't know what's wrong with you. you, you it becomes invisible. It becomes invalid and you kind of it's a silent partner that you're carrying around and 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 not able to give voice to and, and honor your experience and I think from a, a mental health point of view it you in the not knowing you nurture a really unhelpful relationship with your pain with your pain I think and allowing your pain and honoring your pain and looking after your pain for me personally I was told there was nothing wrong so I lived like there was nothing wrong um, and and I did my best to be as normal as I could and keep up momentum and can keep up pace um, like any normal what what's normal anyway but um, as anybody my age was living their lives and and when I got diagnosed essentially it was a huge relief um, to finally have my experience validated but really I'd, I'd gotten into such a groove of ignoring it that it, it's taken me an awful long time to process it accept it and to make some really important life changes to live the way that I do now you know I think that's really important to touch on you saying you developed a really unhealthy relationship with pain and I think that's something that we all have as AS yeah. that we don't really think about yeah and I think I still to this day have to check and have very important people in my life around me that help me check in with what's a reasonable amount of pain and what's not because I have such a warped perspective of pain you know for me I used to wait until my AS was screaming at me before I listened you know, I would have to be unable to move, unable to walk before I stopped and rested and, and cancelled work and cancelled commitments. And, and you probably still wouldn't go to a doctor or anything. You'll just lie on the sofa and rest and wait for yeah, it to pass. Yeah, lots of medication. And, and I mean, it's it's such a conundrum as well. You know, flares are a conundrum because you're so exhausted and so fatigued, but stillness is... is antagonistic to, to the pain so it's um but yeah so even now low levels of pain to me are an absolute breeze compared to the pain that I have lived in and that I lived in during those seven eight years and and even into the early years of, of diagnosis as well so I still have to remind myself now that low levels of pain are still pain and they still deserve to be honored and and, and looked after and Kelly is a vocal coach an amazing singer you have to check her out um, how has that impacted your life as a vocalist and how has it changed now you're diagnosed so what are you doing now that makes your life so much better than previously when you're in so much pain yeah it's it's interesting first and foremost I'm so lucky to be in the profession that I'm in it doesn't require me to be sat at a desk um, still typing and writing you know things that would be absolutely unbearable for me and I'm I'm lucky that in my work and in my vocal coaching work particularly I'm able to be really flexible and, and mobile in my body and I can sit if I want to I can stand if I want to I can um, move around I can integrate my stretches into my practice with my clients and so career-wise for me it's always been such a blessing um, I think the big thing for me and, and the big difference between uh, pre and post diagnosis is pacing and the fatigue particularly for me I'm sure darling you'll relate and anyone watching that suffers will relate that 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 for me is one of the most debilitating things alongside the pain of a flare but the fatigue for me is really and it's very hard to put into words to somebody that has never experienced it right what it feels like when when you're you know it's can I stand up long enough to put my makeup on can I you know and I always lived at such a very fast pace and I slowly realized as I got older that I could continue to do that but I would be maintaining quite high levels of pain if I didn't slow down so I think over the past sort of four or five years I've had to learn the hard way how to start to say no to things so that I can create rest days in between busy long days and f particularly the TV vocal coaching work that I'm fortunate enough and have been fortunate enough to do 
I've had to, to do slightly. that's intense yes. really intense long hours right you know 8 a.m call time 12 1 a.m wrap time and at night not yeah, yeah. in the afternoon <laughs> yeah and I can't do as much of that now so I don't do I mean I did five six years of of really intense tv tv vocal coaching work and I I, I do way less of it now because I just can't I can't stay well and manage that. Do you want to talk to us about your pain and your symptoms and where your pain is? I know you said you had some hip pain, but you've got some other symptoms as well. Yeah, so I've had a lot over the last sort of six six years, I'd say, a lot of pain in my ribs and sternum. Absolute, it's just really settled in in my sternum and ribs. So all of my spasms and pain and stiffness seems to reside here which is for singing particularly um quite uncomfortable you need that area more than yeah. anything how do yeah. you deal with that well the singing and the breathing really helps and learning to perhaps relocate the air lower into the body when my ribs are inflamed is really helpful because then i'm not i'm not putting so much pressure you look fabulous and gorgeous oh, you 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 seem like you're in a really good place i've done a lot of work on that i think i used to have a bit of a motto you know the worse i feel the better i look and i'd sort of work with the invisible and try and disguise it even more and which is really unhelpful by the way i don't don't do that just don't do that um and i've taken a lot of time over the last few years to really engage in therapy i'm a massive advocate yeah, same. for people with with any chronic long-term condition T talking therapies or creative therapies are vital and they were never kind of they were never made available to me on my journey I had to kind of seek it out independently and there's I think that's something I would love to to just champion that we start to support people to be able to process and think about their feelings around carrying the weight of, of of this disease along with them and and that has been life-changing for me and it's really enabled me to identify helpful and unhelpful coping strategies and to start to grieve some of the years I lost being young and feeling old and and I've started yoga therapy as well which I'd never heard of and it's been honestly remarkable I mean when I arrived there in 2019 I couldn't do anything really I couldn't even touch my sternum because it was so sore and I couldn't move at all other than my legs and arms this whole middle bit was just didn't move and she has worked with me so gradually um and I can I've just gained so much Yay. more movement in my body it's it's been kind of I mean this is the most movement I've had since being 18 and I'm 37 now and the oiling has helped me be able to touch parts of my body that were just so sore and it's been it's been remarkable it's so I'm I'm at the moment physically in the smallest amount of pain that I have been for a really long time and hopefully hearing stories like yours like Mark's like everybody's yeah. people can actually now say oh it's okay for me to tell people I'm in pain today oh it's okay for me to walk around the office it's all right for me to sit down you're a very animated person I would never have known <laughs> she is she's like a junk jack-in-the-box when she's teaching when you're teaching Kelly you're very animated you stand you project then you'll be on the piano and then you'll run round and you'll hold our bodies to check we're breathing okay you're up 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 all the time sometimes for me it's kind of in the moment you just get swept up by this talent you're working with or that the song or the energy and you just it's it's almost impossible to kind of to, to kind of not because you're feeding off of of yeah. of all of the energy that you're in the room with yeah. did you know what you had back then 2017 yeah so i didn't but if i did can you imagine if i said hey kelly i'm a bit tired today i have as you know that conversation that people aren't having yeah. or if I'd have been in a place to be able to give voice to my experience and I'd said to to you you know I'm having a difficult day today and you might go why and I'd say well I suffer with a condition called axial spondyloarthritis and, and you'd be like oh what's that and then it would open a conversation up about that and who knows where that may have led you and I 
so much sooner. So it just shows, doesn't it, that, that, that bringing that conversation to life and, and bringing it to the forefront in a room, you just don't know who's in that room with you that might. Persistent pain, yeah. it definitely isn't the norm and we need to start channeling a way around it or start getting further help seeking these symptoms and getting answers because a back pain that lasts longer than three months isn't just your generic back pain and and for everyone we need to start waking up and and getting these diagnoses bringing the diagnosis time down you know your seven is it seven to eight years seven, yeah, seven. between seven to eight years is too long that's seven to eight years that you're never going to get back yeah. but you're going to make the most of it now right yeah too right darling and i like i just praise you for lending your voice to this beautiful charity who do so much work to raise awareness well, it was lovely talking to you today kelly and i'm pretty sure we're going to do loads more yes let this be the beginning of just exciting little collabs for you. part of the team now love that love that love that thank you for having me it's like a joy to be on this lovely orange <laughs> sofa <laughs> and we'll talk to you soon oh thanks darling bye guys